Okay, so I'm making this video for uh, chapter two, new company setup and chart of accounts. So the first thing we saw in class when we did this chapter was that they changed this about around um, they changed this around a bit in that prior to this year, 2022, students were able to um, sign up for a free 12 month subscription to a QuickBook Online Plus account. That was like what we used for chapter one with the Craig's Design and Landscaping um, template. However, because they've come up with the fourth edition, they explained here that Intuit Education Program no longer accepts requests from students for the uh, Online Plus version. So they're not doing that anymore. Now they want students to use the QuickBook Online Accountant, which is a free account that you can use beyond this class. And it's something that um, I encourage all students to set up anyway, as soon as class is over, because I, as you know, I encourage everyone to get certified in QuickBooks. It looks great on your resume and it shows your employer that you are sufficient in the software program. Um, so the way to uh, set up a QuickBook Online account, accountant, um, account would be to go to Google and um, type in QuickBook Online account and sign up for free or, uh, and this is actually it right here, QuickBook Online account and grow your accounting practice. Just Google because you're looking for the free one. And when you find that, you're going to click on it and it's going to bring you here. And if you scroll down, there'll be a green link for you to click on sign up for free. So this is a free account. And this account is set up for people like me. I'm a pro advisor. So people who go out and, um, you know, set up companies, QuickBooks or train their employees in QuickBooks or actually, you know, could be an independent bookkeeper and um, take on a few clients and do clients um, bookkeeping. Uh, I personally just do um, helping companies set up their QuickBook online accounts and train their employees. So once you have this account, you're going to... Um, have this for, for now on, and I will go over in several classes where you go for training and where you go to get certification. And as you already know, if you're watching this video, I already set up a YouTube channel to help students in getting certified. And I have new videos that I need to post for that as well because I have the new 2022 test questions. So you're gonna use your email here. They tell, in the, tell you in the book to use your school email, but whatever you feel comfortable using, um, you can use your email. Just know that if you forget your password or if they want to double check with you, they're going to either send you an email to verify it's you or they'll text you or call you. So the email, your first name, your last name, and your phone is very important. And that's something you're going to write down and your password because I would not have access to it. So you want to make sure you write this down somewhere so that you know next class you have all your information to get in and out of your um, account. The other thing I want to say is the company, which we don't really, like, today we're just going to start with the chart of accounts, but when we get to sales tax, it's important that you use um, Tucson, Arizona. So let me see, we could always probably chain it, but let me just, um, let me see what is the zip code. So I know a few people in class uh, use their zip code from their house. And that's not good because then that's gonna mess you up with your sales tax. So use this zip code right here, 85703. Eight, I'm sorry, 85704, I'm pointing to it and I said three. So it's 85704, if they ask you for your zip code for your company, use the zip code 85704 because that is gonna be for you to implement the correct sales tax once we start selling products, okay? All right, coming back to the book. So here we are in chapter two. And in the beginning, like I said, they kind of go over with you, you know, for the third edition now because we're on to the fourth edition. So as you see, um, you can still complete uh, this book in third edition. It's just that they no longer um, give out the 12 month free plus account. And that's okay. We could still go through everything. The screen might just look a different, a, a little different than the pictures in the book, but we still can do everything that we can doing the plus version in our accountant version as well. And they have a few things here and I noticed a couple of students said, well, I, don't, I didn't see that. If any of these questions aren't addressed, we will address them once we go um, get into our companies and um, go to accountant settings. But one important thing is that we select S Corp, that's small business um, form 1120, because um, we wanna make sure that we have common stock selected as our capital account. So, uh, like I said, for you to get started, you have to set up a QBOA account. So you'd go to www.google.com. Oh, here it is, 85704. Um, you're gonna go to www.google.com and type in Intuit QuickBooks Online account and sign up for free. 
you're going to find that page where it says for you to sign up for free. I have I actually clicked on it so it automatically brought me in here. It'll have like a green button and then you're going to click and you'll come to this screen right here and you're going to sign up for one of these accounts. And once you do that, they'll ask you a few questions and then you'll see a screen like this. So I'm going to exit out of this and you'll see a screen like mine. See, I still have my um, um, 12 month uh, QBOA plus version. So I'll, I'll still be using this account. Um, and you'll see they want you to name the company your first and last name if you don't feel comfortable with that, like I didn't want to really put my last name in there. I just put Nicole D. Um, as right now, we haven't started anything. The first thing we do in chapter one is kind of just go through um, what we want to make sure we have in our company set up. And, as well, and we want to start the chart of accounts because you need to have all your accounts and the account numbers in there to get started with putting in customers and products and vendors and so on. So the first chapter is fairly simple. There's not much work to it. Um, I think the biggest thing, the biggest obstacle or the most difficult part is getting that QuickBook Online accountant um, account set up. So as you saw from the book, um, we, our company address is 2905 Skyline Avenue, Tucson, Arizona, 85704. So that's the address we're going to use because when we um, set up our customers and bill our customers, all our customers that live in the state of Arizona have to pay ta sales tax for the products um, that we're selling. And that, that's true for the United States. So all of us live in Pennsylvania. If we open up a business in Pennsylvania, and we were selling products that is taxable, we would have to tax all Pennsylvania customers. Now, if we set up an online business and there's a customer from New York that purchases from us, we don't have to charge them New York sales tax. That actually is their responsibility to pay their own sales tax when they do their personal income tax. We wouldn't charge them um, sales tax, but we would have to charge sales tax to all customers that live in Pennsylvania and as well as any governmental um companies that pay sales tax um, to all states. So we'll get to that at, you know, at a later date because we'll talk about setting up and, and paying sales tax in the future. So again, this is your address for your company, 2905 Skyline Avenue, Tucson, Arizona, 85704. All right. So let's look at where we would go um, in getting to our company set up. So if you go to the gear icon, now again, this is a plus, so it's gonna look a little different. I think for you, it says company settings, but for me, it says account and settings because I have a QuickBook Plus account. So you're gonna click on this account and settings. And the first thing they ask us to do is to make sure that we have the following things set up. I'm skipping forward a little. They said, go to make sure your product and services, show your product service column on sales form, track quantity and price rate and track inventory quantity on hand. So to do that, you're gonna to go to sales in your tab. And if you wanna see what I'm talking about in the book, I fast forwarded a little, because remember these videos are just really for us to go here. So, so here's the account and settings. And it tells you to go to account and settings, which for you would be company, under your company, you would see company settings. So you're gonna click on that. And then the first thing, oh, Actually, I'm sorry. The first thing they want to do is make sure you have the Small Business Corporation, two or more owners, the Form 1120S. That's the that's your tax form that you would fill out for your taxes. So let's do that. Um, so going back to company, and if by mistake you put the wrong uh, area code, this is where you'd be able to change that as well. This is where you're able to change your company email. So you see you have contact info. You can change your company um, info and the company name. And here's my tax so if we were to do this, let me scroll over so you can see that little pencil. You're going to slip. You can, I think actually for the accountant version, you just have to double click and it brings you in. But for plus version, you have to click the little pencil and then you would come down to this drop down and you'd make sure you selected small business corporation, two or more owners. And then make sure you click save because if you don't save and you just exit out, then it's not going to save. It's going to go by default to whatever you had prior to that. And again, if you... Um, put in the wrong zip code or the wrong information. You can scroll down here to address. See, I have the 2905 East Skyline Drive and then I have Tucson, Arizona. I actually have a different zip, but as long as it's Arizona, that's fine. Um, I think this was because I had this account since the second edition. So I think they actually changed the address or zip code on us. You just come over here and um, double click or 
click the pencil icon and make the change to the zip because you definitely want to make sure you have it for Tucson. The next thing they have us do is go to um, sales and in sales they want to make sure and I'll show you where we're at in the book. I'm scroll down a little. The next thing they want you to do is go to sales. See, and they want to make sure that you have under products and services show product service column on sales form, track quantity and price rate and track inventory quantity on hand. So this is where we'd be tracking and making sure that we stay on top of um, having enough products to put out for our customers. So I'm going to scroll down a little. That's um, in the sales form content. And you would click over here. And this is where you can, um, actually, this is the content, uh, custom transaction numbers should be on. And I'm sorry, let's go down a little bit more. Oops. Oh, I went out of it. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on here. I had a little glitch. It was glitching the other day for us uh, in class as well. So I don't know what's going on. It looks like maybe the the website. Okay. So I'm sorry. So let's go to sales. And if we scroll down, oops, I'm still on usage. Uh, if we scroll down to product and services, that's where I meant to say, you click this or you double click and just make sure you have this one on show product service column on sales form, track quantity and price rate, and track quantity on hand. So those all three should be on, and then you're gonna make sure to save that. The next thing they want you to do is go to expense tab. So you're gonna click on expense tab, and they want under the billing and expenses, make sure you have show items table on expense and purchase form. Make sure that's on. If it's not, you're gonna come on here and make sure it's on and click save. The second thing they want you to check is that you have purchase orders. Use purchase order is on. If it's not, you need to change it and make it on. Okay. After that, they have us go. Um, they tell you to look at payments, but we're not going to be setting that up. The last thing I want you to do is go to advanced. This step is actually very important because this is what we'll be doing for this chapter, setting our chart of accounts. So if you go down to the very bottom tab is advanced, and you'll see the chart of accounts section. For me, it's the third. I think for you, is the second. You're going to click on your chart of accounts and you want to make sure you have on enable account numbers on and then check the show account numbers and then click save. If you do not enable account numbers and show account numbers when we do our chart of accounts later and you go to save it, they're not going to show. The numbers won't come up and they won't actually come in on the chart of accounts at all for you to add them on. So you'll have to come back and do the step over if you didn't save it properly. So if in the future, you get into chart of accounts and you don't see that number column to fill out. That means that you didn't do this properly. You need to enable account numbers and show account numbers and click save. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of that. And that was the last thing they had you do for um, the accounts and settings. Just to show you, scroll down here. Um, we did the billing and, exp and expenses, the purchase order enable account numbers and show account numbers. So that was the last thing you had to do for this section. You're not gonna sign out, just stay in. Cause the next thing we're gonna do is our chart of accounts. So this is gonna be um, the main thing for this chapter is setting up our chart of accounts. It's also known as the account list. So just like I had said in class one, um, profit and loss is what QBO uses for your income statement. I know when you took accounting, we use the term income statement, but QBO uses the term profit and loss. And same thing here, uh, when you're looking for your chart of accounts to print it out, it would be called account list. It's a list of all the accounts your company uses. So this is actually step one of, and if I have a new client, this is the first thing we do. We usually import uh, an Excel or a PDF file with their uh, information. If we can't, we have to manually do it. So that's usually the first step in setting up somebody's account is making sure you set up their chart of account. So this is very realistic in the real world as this is the starting point in, in getting your account together. So they're saying to log in, which we already in, and make sure you have the enable account and show account numbers, which we know we definitely did. And the first one they have you set up is um, the banking account. Now I do want to show you two things. They have account type and detail type. Those are the two types that you're going to allocate to every single account in your chart of accounts. Now, your account type is going to be your major one. So is it an asset? Is it a liability? Is it an expense? Is it an equity account? So that account type is, is one of the major five accounts. And then from there, detail type, you're going to be singling into 
what type. So the account type, it's an asset bank account, but detail type, is it checking, is it saving, is it a money market, is it a credit card, um, and then allocating a number to it, okay? Now, I've had this account for a very long time, so I already have this uh, set up. So this is something that I wouldn't actually be showing you step-by-step step because I have this set up. So I'm gonna do just a few with you and hopefully that'll be enough for you to figure out what you have to do for the entire chapter. So I do wanna go over how do we get to the chart of accounts. There's two ways to access your chart of accounts. You can either go to the gear icon and under your company, the fourth one down is chart of accounts. I, I believe for you it's the same, but if not, you'll see under your company, you'll see chart of accounts and you can click it there. Or on the left hand navigation, you can go down to accounting and select chart of accounts. So here I am in my chart of accounts and you see this new button. This is where most of the students I tend to see like to just create each one new as they go down because there's usually two parts of this chapter as well in the homework where they say you're going to create some new and then you're going to batch edit or edit a few of them. And some students get frustrated with the edit part and they just decide to create them all new. Whatever you feel comfortable with, that is fine. But I'm just going to show you my chart of accounts. See, my chart of accounts is already completed. So instead, I'm just going to kind of walk you through the first through few. I'm not going to save them. Um, but if you remember when we did Craig's landscaping design, we just went to batch edit. And when we did that, we just went and added all the numbers. However, because um, we don't have all of the accounts, instead we have to create new for many of these accounts. So I'm gonna go to the first one. It said banking, checking, and 101. So I'm gonna come over here to new, and this pop-up window comes up for your account. You would come over here and you drop down and select bank. Then you would come over here and you would select checking and the name is checking and the number is 101. So let's go back to the book and make sure we have this as seen. So if we scroll down, it said, make sure for account type, you have bank. For detail type, it's checking and your name is checking and the number is 101. So that's the first one and you would click save and close. The next one new they want you to do is your accounts receivable. So they want you to now go back to new and you're gonna go accounts receivable, accounts receivable, accounts receivable, 105. So let's do that. I'm gonna cancel because I have that account already. So I'm gonna to go to new and I'm gonna select account type, accounts receivable. And automatically it'll populate the information assuming they know what they're gonna put, which we did, it's only accounts receivable. And then over here for the name, we're gonna select have, keep it as accounts receivable and then we're going to write 105 and then you're going to click save or close or save in new because we have a few that we're going to do so you can click save in new and you're just going to go to the next one that accounts receivable will automatically save for you so the next thing they have here is a chart so i'll show you in the book you guys should at this point hopefully know how to access your ebook you're, there's going to be a chart and the chart is going to tell you, okay, so account type. So you're just going to go down this, setting these all as save and new. So they have this one, adverts, uh, I'm sorry, other current assets, and then it's inventory and then it's merchandise inventory and it's 115. The next one is other current assets, prepaid expenses, and then it's prepaid insurance and it's 125. So you're going to be inputting each one of these following this table all the way down to 633, which is telephone expense. So they have in the chart exactly what your account type is, what your detail type, your name, and your account number. I'll do one more with you. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go to new. And the account type was other current asset. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select other current asset. Then they wanted me to select inventory. So I'm going to come to inventory. And then over here, they wanted me to write merchandise inventory. So I'm going to type in merchandise inventory. And then they asked us to have that as 115. So I already have that. Let's see what happens if I go over here to save it. It's going to give me a little pop up. Wait a minute. Something's not right. You already have something with this name. If you have that come up, it could be that you already have that account and you just need to edit it. That's possible because we are going through this procedure a little different than we did 
originally um, when they, the third edition first came out. So if that does happen to you, that means you'll just have to come down the list and find it. And then you would come over here. Let's say if it was this one, I'd come to this drop down and it would say edit or well, you would go to edit. And then when you go to edit, a pop up window will come. And then all I need to do is make sure this, this and this is correct. And if it is, I just allocate whatever the number is and save and close. OK. All right, so you're now going to go in your chart of accounts and you're going to add all of these accounts to your chart of accounts just as i showed you with the first three after that it assumes that you can edit the following so they have you'll have a supplies account and they instead of you going to plus sign new they're saying go to that account as i just a minute did a minute ago and go down to that drop down menu and click edit and just edit that particular account so this is going to be expenses office general administrative expenses and then you'll write office supplies and then the number 621. if you go down the list and you just cannot find this particular account then you can go to save and new so if you cannot find it, because I know a couple of students told me, well, that account is not on here, then I would tell you to go ahead and go save new. If you look and you cannot find it, which is very possible because we are not using the normal um, procedure of setting up this account, because regularly we would have set up the 12 month QBO uh, Plus account and we would have identified it as a computer software hardware company. And when you identify the company, um, QuickBook automatically by default kind of set up all these accounts that they assume your business uses. Since we don't have a real business and we're setting ourselves up as a bookkeeper slash accountant, there may be many missing accounts to an actual retail store. So you might have to create new. So like I had for that last one, they wanted us to do office supplies expense. So you're gonna come over here to expenses and then it tells you to go to, um, what was that office? General administrative. There we go. And then you're gonna come over here and you're gonna write office supplies, right? You'll override that. And then you come over here and you'll write 621 because that's what they had you doing in the book for this particular account. So expenses, office general administrative expenses, you would type in office supplies and the number 621. So here's the table for the batch edit. Now remember we did the batch edit for Craig's um, design and landscape company. So that's that little pencil sign. Um, I can say a few students got a little frustrated with this and decided to do new. It's completely up to you on if you want to try or not. But if you go to the batch edit, that's where you'll scroll down and you'll look for. Now, see, I have several accounts that I'm not using because um, several accounts came up as accounts they believe I might have or need to use for my company and many of them didn't. That's okay. Um, if there's an account and it bothers you because someone says it did bother them, what you can do is you can make it inactive. So if you didn't want this account, if I don't want this account to show, I could come down here and I could say, make it active and it won't show. And then I could say, yes, then it'll make it inactive. And anything you make inactive, if you later decide to, hey, I want to use it, it'll just come back out. You could do that with vendors, customers. Let's say you have a customer and they haven't purchased anything in two years. You might want to get them off your list. So you can make anything inactive. And then let's say that customer two, three years later down the road decides to start purchasing from you again then you can make them active. So again, if there's anything here that's bothering you or you don't like the list being so long, you can make those accounts inactive. So hopefully you guys have a good idea of how to complete your chart of accounts. If not, it doesn't take that long. I mean, if you have to do some of them in class, but this is the um, edit list. So 318 retained earnings, 401 sales, 601 advertising expense. So what they're saying is you should have advertising and marketing, but they want you to change the name to advertising expense. Somebody asked, well, do we have to have it as advertising expense? I would say this, when we get further into the other chapters and I said, okay, well, we're, we're going to, you know, pay Moss advertising and you need to select advertising expense. When you go to the drop down menu, you're going to be looking for 601 advertising expense. If you don't see it, you might be a little, you know, flustered because you didn't change it to advertising expense if you still have it as advertising and marketing. So just go ahead and try to make all the correct changes. They want 603 as bank charges, 611 as insurance expense. So you're going to do all of these that are in the list. And at the end, I believe it's 27 altogether. You'll have 27 accounts. So 
you can look at what other thing one of the things I really like about this book is it'll give you um, a picture of what your chart of accounts should look like. So if you count down or if you follow down the list that you have, you should have 27. So let's look at how you would save your chart of accounts. So mine is obviously um, more advanced than yours because I have already completed this book with this account but, and I don't always redo my chart of accounts, but I want to show you how to save it. So after you complete putting in all of these edited accounts, so you should have 27 accounts all in entirety with your chart of accounts. So you're going to then come over here to run report and it's going to automatically bring you to the report section and your account list because that's what your chart of account is. So when you come to the account list, you're going to scroll over. For me, I have to scroll to the right because it's not just showing up, but you're going to look, remember that button that you click down and it exports to PDF. You're going to do that and then it'll give you the option to save as PDF. When you click this, you'll have that little pop-up window on the bottom right if you have your Chromebook and it'll say show and list. And that is where you're going to want to change the name to the name that they have in the chapter, which is the assignment you would send in lieu of your smart book chapter two assignment and a lot of students uh went ahead on on uh, thursday as i see and sent everything in which is great because i see this class is really on top of things so i commend you for if you are one of those students so um let's see what do they tell us to save it as they have, i think they have it over here actually in the next page here we go save the account list so they go over the step you click run report then you go to export to pdf save as pdf and then they're going to tell you what they want you to save it as and they want you to save it as chapter two under scroll chart of accounts it is important to save these files exactly as i say because as one of the students saw on thursday they said well where am i sending this to and i said well i have in the announcements of the class all that information when you go to the announcements you'll see Let's see if I can get here we go if you go to the announcements everything every single assignment that's in your grade book is here and I'm telling you what you're sending me in lieu of so the student said oh okay I didn't see that if you see see five five students decided to post right here the announcement page and that's fine so when you double click on here it'll tell you okay so this is the file it's chapter one underscore coa underscore com uh, sample company that was the PDF file that we saved from chapter one um, so the one we just saved right now is actually chapter two. So let me show you that. So if you scroll down to chapter two, it'll say that's your chapter two chart of accounts PDF file. So that's what we you just saved right now. And I have a student that wasn't saving the files like I was asking, and he was kind of confused, like, well, I'm not sure which one. Now I said, well, you're gonna have to go into each one individually and resave it then and save it under the correct file number. That's why I had been constantly reminding you to make sure to save it according to what the chapter's telling you, because that's what I put here in the announcement. I put the actual chapter file that was noted in the chapter. So this way, if you're right away, go in and rename it the correct name later on when you look like, well, where do I have to? And I have no problem with you posting. I see some students wanted to post right in the announcement section, that's fine, or you have to email it to me, okay? Now, going back to announcements, every week you have a project, and that project will be the homework assignments from chapter one and two for week one. For week two would be the chapter um, assignments, which are your exercises, for week three and four, and so on. So for this week, we already did the video for chapter one, so you already have saved the journal and the trial balance from chapter one exercises from last video now we're going to do the exercise 2 2 chart of accounts pdf file okay so this is for the exercise so we have nine more accounts that we need to add on in the homework and let's see what they have in the next couple of pages here Export it to Excel. We actually don't do that because you guys have Chromebooks. Invite an accountant. We absolutely don't do that. We could look at that. But so if I had a company and I realized, okay, this is too much for me. I can't do it. I want to hire a bookkeeper or hire, you know, outsource somebody to take over my account. Then you would come over here to my accountant and you put the email address of whoever it is that you want to have access to your company. Now they'll have access to go into your company with whatever user rights you give them. We'll look at user rights in a second. Um, and they will be able to go in. I do have a few clients that I do have on there um, because there were times where, you know, they first were getting started and they were a little nervous and they asked, well, can, 
I put you as my accountant for a little while in case you need to go in and make any corrections or changes. And I said, that's fine. So if I give them my email address that I have attached to my QBOA account, it has to be the one on the QBOA, not this account. Um, they send it to me. I get an email. I confirm it. And now I'll have access. I have a list of clients and I have access to their books. So I'd be able to click onto their account and do whatever changes or audits need to possibly be made. Um, and it happens once in a blue moon, somebody will call me up and say, I don't know what I did. I had my last client that called me, they by mistake went to um, the accounts and settings and changed their subscription. It was an easy one, two, three, change right back. Um, but when she changed her subscription, uh, she by mistake uh, wiped out all her features for projects and jobs costing. And because she went down to Simple Start, which is a very simplistic, it's only like, I think, $30 a month, and everything was wiped away. And me as her account, I was able to go in, because she had put me as her account, and, and make the changes that are necessary. So that's what this little section is, and it kind of goes over that with you. But we're not going to do that. Um, it's It actually used, I did this for the first two times I taught this class. I gave them um, my email, and then I had access to their QBO company, but it was a nightmare because I got like hundreds of um, emails every time a student would do something and it was just too overwhelming. So we don't do that step, but I just wanted to go over it with you as well. Um, and then they talk about if you go onto another time, so I'm on my computer at home, but when I go to another computer, let's say at school, if I log in at a friend's, because QBOA, it's a, it's a cloud version, you can access it from any um, computer. So if you go onto a new computer, they're going to need verification. Um, Intuit has never been hacked, so they're very proud of that. So they always make sure that if you do sign somewhere else, they're going to make sure to verify that that's you. So chances are they're going to send a six-digit code either to whatever email you uh, created your account with or to the phone number. Um, so be prepared to have access to either one of those if something happens. The last thing they talk about in this chapter um, before they get to the homework is user roles and access rights. And um, I tell my clients all the time, if you're the owner, you need to be the master administrator. The master administrator is the person has all access rights to the company administrator. I did have a client about four or five years ago who had a solar panel business and he had his accountant as the master administrator and he was only the company administrator so he had all feet all, like he was had all capabilities to do anything with the company but he wasn't the master administrator meaning this guy could have locked him out of his own company because he was the master you only have one and so um when he let go of his uh, accountant because of some shady dealings he found out he was stealing from him and i went into his account and i said well hey who you don't have master administrator rights he does and so after talking to QuickBooks, they decided he should just go ahead and create a new account. And that's what he ended up having to do. So I always tell clients, make sure if you're the owner, you're the master administrator. You should never give that rights to anybody. Um, even your accountant, you can give your accountant company administrator rights, but not master administrator. Um, the audit log is a way for you to see who logged in and what they did. They'll tell you the, the user uh, what time and day. So the auto log is a great way for an owner to kind of see what's going on. So it tells you here, well, this is the user, that's their email, and they edited this specific account. So audit log is just a way for an owner to come on and see what happened maybe in the last 24 hours or a couple of days. Now we're going to go to the homework. And the homework would be here, the resources and activities. So if we scroll down, you'll see the first one would be two one exercises. And so the exercises is where you're actually gonna do some work. This first table is where you create new. And we should already be familiar with how to access our chart of accounts. So you're gonna come down here to accounting and then go to chart of accounts. And they're telling you, you have to create these five accounts right here new. So prepaid rents, so you're gonna to go to other current assets, then prepaid expenses, and then you're gonna name the account prepaid rent, and then you're gonna number it 123. So you're gonna do these five as new, and then they say, again, I'm not sure if it's correct that these accounts are here, but most of them are, because uncategorized asset income and expense are default accounts. So the only one that you might not see is travel, but they're saying in these four, you should be able to edit. So you'd go to those accounts and edit and make put these information in, into the different um, columns. And then you're gonna do the same thing you did for your um, chapter assignment. And you're gonna go, after you're finished, you're gonna go to run report, after you put in those nine accounts. So now you had 27, now you have 36. You should have 36 in its entirety. Check and make sure you have all 36 accounts. You're gonna go to run report, and then you're gonna scroll over and go to export PDF. And then you're going to save it 
right? As chat, exercise 2 2 underscore chart of accounts. And that would be that second file, right? This file right here, exercise 2.2 chart of accounts, that you have to send me for the learning one project. That was the homework assignment. So this is the homework from chapter one. This is the homework from chapter two. You can either post it here to the announcements or you can email them to me, whichever you want. And so that's what you're going to, um, the last thing you would have to do as far as uh, the classwork. So you took care of the smart books and you took care of the project. You need to make sure you go on and do your discussion question before next class and um, email me if you have any questions. So this concludes chapter two. Um, and as you see, that would be the last thing that you have to do. I'm just asking for the chart of accounts. And so um, we will start with chapter three on Tuesday.